Sports HD Friday Fight Night. Proudly present 12 three minute rounds of boxing for the welterweight championship of Europe. The officials have been appointed by the European Boxing Union and the British Boxing Board of Control. EBU supervisor at ringside is Mr. Jean-Marcel Nats. British Boxing Board of Control stood in charge, Jeff Bolter. Timekeeper at the bell, Barry Pinder from Sheffield. The three scoring judges at ringside are Franco Cimanali from Austria, Venceslav Nikolov from Bulgaria, and Robert Vauweis from the Netherlands. Finally, when the action commences, the referee in charge of the action is Mr. Massimo Barbecchio from Roma, Italy. And now introducing to the challenger this evening. Boxing out of the red corner, wearing the blue colored shorts trimmed with silver. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled 10 stone, six pounds. He has an outstanding record consisting of 32 contests, 30 wins. 14 of those wins coming by way of knockout, the solitary defeat, and one draw. He comes to the ring this evening as the former WBA welterweight champion of the world, presenting from Bravari, Ukraine, Yuri Nuzhnenko. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the gold blue shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled 10 stone, 6 pounds, 12 ounces. He also has an excellent record, 45 contests, 39 wins. 15 of those wins coming by way of knockout, only 4 defeats and 2 draws. Tonight, he makes the proud first defense of his championship, presenting the welterweight champion of Europe from Manchester, Magic. Matthew Hudson! Mr. Barabaglio will now give his final instructions. 12 three minute rounds. Remember what I told you in the dressing room. No rabbit punch, no headbutt, no low blow. Shake your hands. Good luck. There was some old-fashioned eyeballing at the weigh-in between these two. It continued while the referee was giving final instructions there. Nuznenko comes over here saying, I've fought and defeated much better boxers than Matthew Hatton. He's had a few uh, choice observations about what he might do to the Manchester favourites as well. Hatton, well, he will be wanting to make no slip-ups here because improbable as it might have seemed so many years ago when he was losing to the likes of David Kirk, the, Man the Mansfield Southpaw, Sutton in Ashfield Southpaw, a world title shot for Hatton, if he comes through this, is no longer just a fantasy. He's moving towards it. Yeah, well, this is probably the night where Matthew proves that he's uh, worthy of holding the European title. He's jumped to queue, he knows he's jumped to queue. When you look at the lists, he's in a really tough division. It's been a tremendous achievement becoming European champion. But already you can see how businesslike Nuznenko is, stepping right up. He's tough, he's strong, he's aggressive. Matthew likes to control the pace in his fights. Don't know if he's going to be allowed to do that here. He fought Branco. Branco was the danger punch with him, was that left hook, and Hatton did really well, working behind the jab, staying away from it. Nuznenko, the danger shot, is the right hand, but already he's showing greater variety in his work than Branco did in his. And showing much more determination, a solid look about him. He's walking right up to Hatton. Hatton can't do too much about that. And a couple of times already, he's pulled his head away from the punches, which is dangerous. That's better, he wants his hands up nice and tight. Nuznenko says that Andreas Kotelnik got bad results over here, and that he didn't get any favours from judges. I suppose he's talking about when he fought Suleiman Mbai. Well, maybe so, but Nuznenko says he will take it into his own hands, and he, he intends to knock Hatton out. Certainly talk the talk. Well, he has the look of a man who knows what he's doing. He, he marches up, then he dips to, to one side or the other before he starts throwing the punches. That's better. Hatton getting some counters off now. 
I think he was maybe caught in the hot a little bit, Hart, and I don't think he expected such an explosive start from Nuznenko. Yeah, really good aggressive start from the Ukrainian, Yuri Nuznenko, 34 years old, by five years the older man. Matthew Hatton, and according to Bob Chan, and the work with him, is, as much as anything, the improvement has been about making him loosen up. He said he was much too stiff. And interestingly, some of the preparations have involved... Oh, oh, good, good, good left hand! Two, good left hand for Nuznenko, and this is big trouble for Hatton five, down in the six, opening round. Well, Nuznenko's been looking for that left hook since the first bell sounded, and it's landed, and... Really badly shaken up Matthew Hatton, the referee buying him a little bit of time, he may need it. He's got 20 seconds to get through and he's wanting to hold on and he's wanting to buy time. He shipped another left hook as he went into that clinch and these are really dangerous moments here for Matthew Hatton and Nuznenko's looking to get him out of here right here and now and Hatton needs to hold on, needs to buy some time and get through to this bell and that cannot come a moment too soon as Nuznenko comes forward, Hatton survives. Well, what a nightmare start for Matthew Hatton, Jim. Well, I was saying that Matthew was pulling his head away from punches, which is dangerous, but he was getting away with it. He was tightening his defences up, but he just pulled away and then bang in behind the defence, beautiful left hook, he'd thrown that punch a dozen times up to that point, most of them were blocked, some of them landed high, that one landed bang on the chin, and Matthew did well, all you want him to do in that situation is survive, he's almost to the end of the round, he's done that, he has to get his wits back about. Nice right hand's coming in, bang, but remember clipping back in it, jab, jab, right hand, he'll walk onto one now, he'll walk onto be nice and tight now, Matthew, this is nice and tight. Bob Shannon having to get his man refocused. Second round and the start, which happened most definitely did not need. Now he's got an uphill task. Nuznenko, we talked about his experience as an amateur. He was outstanding. Former Ukrainian light welterweight champion at amateur. And look at that for a shift in the odds. Nuznenko, it was Hatton 2 to 1 on before they started. Now Nuznenko 5 to 2 on. That's another thing you have to remember, Ruznenko, tremendous amateur career, Matthew didn't really have any amateur career, he's learned it, which is another reason he's taken maybe so long to produce his best for him, but he just doesn't quite know how to cope, how to keep this fellow at bay. Ruznenko's got good wins on his, uh, on his CV, he beat Frederick Closer. In France, beat Maxim Nestorenko, Rafael Jakovic, and you saw him at the top of the European rankings. All good performances, and just one defeat as a professional. Hatton needed to be absolutely at his best. That strayed a little bit low, that left hand. Referee didn't see it, or at least allowed it to continue. And this is better from Hatton. I think Nuznenko is punching a lot harder than the Hatton camp expected. That was a tremendous left hook in the opening round. Uh, Matthew has woken up a little bit, his defences are tighter but he needs to get the jab going to try to stop this fellow's march forward. I think there's a feeling that he was just going to be the sort of typical upright East European that we've seen so many times and that maybe a, bit, a little bit one-paced in the manner of an Andreas Kotelnik but he's certainly gone out there showing real impressive uh, desire has Nuznenko. Well, he's boxed abroad, he obviously has learned that you want to make a quick impression, you want to get, take charge as soon as you can. And he started positively, this is better from Hatton now. Well, he needed to settle down, needed to get into the fights, needed to catch the judge's eye. You see Rickiot on his feet on the far side there, shouting his advice. Not the same accuracy from Nuznenko in this round, he's doing the same things. But uh, Matthew coping with it better. But it looks to me as though the sheer physical strength of Nuznenko is going to be a massive problem to Hatton as this one goes along. He's imposing himself, no great accuracy in this round, but he's still imposing himself in Hatton. Hatton's work certainly improved in this round. Nuznenko won defeat against the current WBA champion, Vyacheslav Senchenko. He said he came back from that tougher and angrier. 
tough and angry man had Matthew Hatton down in the opening round. Hatton's had a, a better second round, but I suppose he had to, really. Yeah, but you feel as though he's busting a gut just to stay in there with Nuznenko. Nuznenko still looks the boss, and he's taking a lot out of Hatton's tank. Move across it. Don't say that. Let him get in back. Matthew Hatton's the body, corner it? was it's very much happier with it's the second round. Fans, this European up. welterweight Jump title down. fight. The right Manchester man aiming to hang on to the crown that he won earlier this year. He's into the fight. Nuznenko, you feel Jim still the stronger. Yeah, I think the strength of Nuznenko is going to have huge problems as this one goes along unless Hatton can find a jab or something to stop him from this march forward that he's, that he's brought here. Look, that's better, that's what he has to do. Good, solid, sharp jabs. Victory here would propel Matthew Hatton into the top ten in the WBA rankings. British champion at the moment, Kel Brook, due to fight Michael Jennings, who's at ringside watching tonight. This is better, he's putting a bit of purchase into his jab now, Hatton. Cannot allow this fella to keep marching up close and bullying him. Good, jabs a good again. job, yeah, good job. They said as one. Well. Yeah, well, that's what he's going to have to do. Maybe try to keep things at long range with the jab until some of the steam leaves Nuschenko's work because he is really fired up. Well, there's a feeling in some quarters that Hatton would be the younger, the fresher, the hungrier. And that the further the fight went, the more it would be his contest. A little bit of a warning from the referee, as you saw, quite emphatically about following through and using the elbow. It's just kind of Hatton box under pressure for the 12 rounds. Wasn't really pressurised against uh, Franco. He's certainly under pressure here. Coping with it well at the moment. We've seen a lot of the uh, much vaunted Luznenko right hand so far, have we? A lot of, most of the work has been the jab and the hook from the left. Yeah, well, the, the, the left hook certainly worked a treat in all the round. There's the uppercut there. Right on cue. That's a problem. The few times he has landed clean, it has troubled Hatton. Hatton boxed well in this round, got a lot of punches off. Nullified a lot of Nuschenko's work, but he still looks so strong and he's still marching forward. Real lively start to this fight. Scheduled for 12 rounds, of course. Lovely Matthew. And Hatton, after an awful start, has now settled about his work with an altogether greater purpose. I think Hatton's winning this round, but not really making any dent in his Nenko, not able to discourage him. He's prepared long and hard, you're hearing beforehand, he's had more than nine weeks in camp, training, preparing, focused on this big, big test. Surely for Hatton, on paper anyway, this promises to be his toughest night. Certainly the highest quality opponent. Nice little burst there from him, that's what he wants to do. Little burst of punches, use the jab, decent round. And that right hand, you've got to faint with him and concentrate and move. Don't just move off him. He's, and, and seeing that, his eyes now are marking up. Them left over me, over me. Yeah. You, you catch him in them left hooks, aren't you? In them right hand, which clusters, the bam, 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 club, move, move, move. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. right. Remember, concentrate now. Concentrate. The corner said that Matthew Hatton won round that round, four. and when he went back to the corner, the first words was, there you are, you're in the fight. Yep, you're back in the fight, they told him. If he can lead off, just... This march forward of Nuznenko is dangerous, so if he can step forward, meet him as he comes forward. Get some snap into the jab. Nuznenko just with a little bit of marking around the right eye. There's a swelling underneath the right eye and indeed the left eye. The cheekbones and it's starting to show. And Hatton with a little bit of uh, damage around the mouth. Matthew Hatton, like Ricky, has that pale skin, though, which shows every mark. 
Yeah, that's a fact. You see the rope burns as the fight goes along. Is Renko still able to get close? Hatton still being forced to work under this pressure. Been a busy fighter, Matthew Hatton. 284 rounds he'd had since before this fight began, since his pro debut. And as you've heard so long, under the shadow of Ricky Hatton, but now fighting with real pride, he's the star of the show. Yeah, and I think he's, he's shaken the psychological effects of the knockdown. What was a positive look. He's certainly starting to fancy it more. Well, the good news is that Nuznenko is just doing exactly the same things now as he was doing earlier, so this might be his act. His right eye particularly is swelling up, thanks to the accurate jabbing of Hatton. Much, much better this from Hatton, who looked tentative in that opening round, and Nuznenko there raced off the corner stool and was right into it, dictating matters, had that first round knocked down, but Hatton now right back into it. And looking good, looking loose, picking his shots well. Yeah, he's boxing well Coming at the up. moment. Lushnenko still looking Coming solid. Up. But uh, not, certainly not unbeatable. Fancying that right hand hat. And he's having some success with it. Oh, look at that right hand from Hatton. Yeah, that confident look about those punches. Ricky Hatton said to me before this fight, yeah, I'm really proud of him, so proud of him. After those early setbacks in his career, when he was almost looking to turn it in, and I said, stay with it, you can do it, and he has done it, and he's now the champion. Yeah, although he boxed under Ricky's shadows, he's been boxing abroad over in Las Vegas, so he's picked up, you know, experience you can't buy, and that's made him a better fighter. Now it's his turn. Doing well, and Ricky Hatton approving. We're over in the northeast next Friday. Stuart Hall, the newly crowned British bantamweight champion, defending his title against the tough former champion Martin Power. Join us live from Sunderland, also the uh, reappearance of the popular Macam Tony Jeffries. We kick off at 10 p.m. over on HD2 and Sky Sports 2. Round five. Fifth round, fascinating fight brewing up. Great start from Nuznenko, had Matthew Hatton down in that opening round, but Hatton now has come back. Nuznenko, though, starting fast in this fifth and being told off by the referee for punching with the inside of the glove. Well, we know Hatton is in great shape, Bob Shannon gets all of his fighters in tremendous shape, and he's going to need this because this fella doesn't stop coming forward. That's a lovely right hand again. He's picked a couple of beautiful right hands, Hatton. The crack of that. Measured it, timed it, and it made Nuzlenko most definitely blink. He felt the weight of that. Nuzlenko still trying the left hook, but Hatton blocking it. It was the left hook which put his man down in that opening round. Hatton just busier, maybe. Home advantage could be a factor, obviously, whenever he lands the punches, the response of the crowd, but it's Nuznenko's trying to put him onto the back foot. Not so accurate now, Nuznenko. I think maybe it's down to the fact that Hans livened up a little bit. He's a little bit guilty of holding every time Nuznenko gets close. The referee hasn't been on his case, but you want to be careful of that. Jab working again. There's the left hook, that's all he's looking for. Trying to tee off on Hatton's chin again. Nice little bursts of punches from Hatton again. Nishnenko hasn't been in the ring since November. Lack of action, which just might count against him. Last minute of the fifth round. Yeah, there's a different look about Hatton now. Much more confident look and still tough. This is a close round. He's boxing well, getting his punches home. So 
so much about boxing, Jim, is about timing, isn't it? They got Branko at the right time, and now have they got Nuznenko at the right time? Matchmaking in boxing, absolutely key. Yep, it's crucial there, but one thing is timing nicely is that right hand lead. Nuznenko, he's walking straight forward now, not quite the same body movement as we saw in the first couple of rounds, so he's an easier target. Manhattan taking advantage of that. Well, Bob Shannon was saying he's left hook happy, left hand happy, almost intimating to Matthew Hatton that he's a one-trick pony. Dangerous trick, but that's that right hand again. Had some success right the way through the fight with the right hand as Hatton, and he's finishing this round confidently. I'm impressed with the way that Matthew Hatton's come back into this fight, the composure that he's shown. There's the statistics suggesting that it's very close. Nuznenko having that knockdown in the first round, so that's going to be a 10 8. Jim. You can not have them dead level, but of three rounds to two for Hatton because of what like this good, accurate, long range punches. Hope he stays with it mentioned earlier about the fact that they've been working on his movement and trying to get him to loosen up Matthew Hatton since he's been in the Bob Shannon gym in Openshaw and certainly he has shown more variety than Nuznenko. There's the odds, can't split them. Fascinating. I think that's the problem for Nuznenko, he's just doing exactly the same things, marching forward at Hatton, using the jab, timing the punches as he comes forward. A little of desperation in these neckers what now. Not as cute as I thought he might have been. Oh, he looked he started in a real business-like manner, and you just feared that he was just going to school Hatton and walk straight through him in that opening round. Not quite proved to be the case since then. Hatton doing well to cover up when the taller Ukrainian gets inside and tries to load up on those left hooks. Key phase of the fight, you sense. Hatton trying the right hand again, just the feeling that uh, Nuznenko beginning to bully him again, not really landing too many punches, but uh, taking charge a little bit. Both of them, six to five on. Pick and fight. It's a good shot. Katelnik, that's Katelnik almost said. Nishnenko looks a bit like Katelnik, doesn't he? Blonde, upright. Very similar style. A bit more aggressive, maybe. Yeah. But Nuznenko is trying to show that he's physically the stronger man. He's trying to bully Hatton around when they're getting close. <laughs> Claims a really successful amateur record, does Nuznenko, going back 110 out of 142, he says. Difficult to check those stats, but taking his word for it, it certainly shows that he has an impressive amateur pedigree. And Matthew Hatton has almost learnt as he went along, like Johnny Nelson did as a professional. Yeah, well, no amateur career to speak of there. Uh, as I say, that's maybe why he's a late bloomer. Takes a little bit of time to show his best form. He's doing that now. I just think Nuznenko moving himself back into the driver's seat. That's better from Hatton. That's much right, better. Right hand again, Jim. Works his way out of that clinch beautifully and a couple of really good solid right crosses. Yep, he's got to find a way to stop the march forward. He found it in the last couple of rounds. But Nuznenko walking up close again. Hatton holding a little bit up close. The referee's not been on his case, thankfully. That's what we want to see, but more of that. A bit of belief and a bit of bravado in that attack. Nuznenko, who said, I'm going to smash Hatton and leave him face down on the canvas. Well, he certainly smashed him in the first round. But as for the canvas, it's anything but. Let's have a listen. Get the spell on him, get the spell on him. Yeah, but. Come on, let's get the jet. Sit, get that there, back, let's go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go, guys. Yeah, with some lovely right hands. When he lets the punches go, it's really impressive, Hatton. I'd like to see him stepping forward with the shots. This fellow has been allowed to march forward. We're seeing the best of Hatton in this round. 
I tell you, there were signs that Nuzhnenko may have been trying to get himself back into the driving seat, but that's the kind of responses we want to see. We want to see tight defence, step forward with the jab, but really boxing well. There's the scorecard as Jim has it. Nuzhnenko by a round. Could be either way right now. Second round. Round seven. Well, Hatton up and ready, and Nuzhnenko a little bit slow to get off the stool. As the referee ushers the cornerman out of the ring, action underway once more. Nuzhnenko slightly the taller man. But any physical advantages he may have in terms of reach haven't told. Left hook has been the danger punch. It's a little bit scrappy up close. This is why Matthew could step forward and meet his ankle with a jab, stop him in his tracks. Ooh, the left hand from, from uh, Nuznenko there really was a low one. Yeah, he's going for the body now, maybe trying to take some of the movement out of Hatton's legs. Good job. That's what he needs. He needs to keep Nuznenko at range, not let him get in close and land those damaging left hooks. It's going to be energy sapping in the second half of the fight. They warned a couple of times about punching round there uh, behind the head. Lovely little bust. These, these are good eye-catching busts. Want to see more of their lovely stuff. Yeah, that's what it's about, isn't it? Got an Austrian judge, one from Bulgaria and one from the Netherlands here tonight. Italian referee. An experience. Championship experience is about providing the punches sometimes which catch the judges' eyes. A little bit of a protest from Hatton about another low blow from Nuznenko. Referee concurs. A little bit of a warning. Well, Hatton's been to learn something from uh, Branko. I have a little complaint to the referee. Put thoughts in their mind. If he does that again, a little points deduction always comes in handy. Wouldn't do any harm, would it? Equal up the point for the touching the canvas in the first round. Well, this is good stuff in, from Hatton in this round. Getting the punches off nice and quickly, tighten his defences up. Showing a lot of composure has happened. No shortage of self-belief either. But again, he finished the stronger in the previous round, which is a good sign in these kinds of battles. And he looks to be finishing the stronger in this round as well, moving into the last half minute. You mentioned the conditioning, I thought. When I saw him, when I first saw him up here, the bloom in the skin of Matthew Hatton, he looked really fit and terrifically well conditioned and prepared for this. That's a good right hand. This is as good as I've seen Matthew Hatton because he's under real pressure here. He's having to work every second under pressure, coping with it well. Now his punches are beginning to stop this fellow in his tracks. That's a good round for Hatton, certainly in the closing stages. Quality work. Icing on his back. Well done, Matt. Well done. Well done. Get the icing Feeling good, Paul. Give yeah. the spray as well. Yeah. Well, fantastic, fantastic. That. Well, deep remember, breathing, remember. Deep deep, come on, deep breath. Come on. Deep come on. Deep You've got this down, haven't you? Number eight coming up now. Yeah. They're delighted, Jim. So they should be. I mean, there was confidence he's worked there. Nuznenko is becoming a little bit ragged now, maybe a little bit of desperation. I think the knockdown in the opening round, he maybe fancied an early night, maybe thought it was going to be too good for Hatton. Certainly not the case. Right. Yeah. Step across him, jab him. We've got to score the points in this fight. The There's the statistics, and they suggest that Hat is now getting the edge on this one. And there's the odds, three to one on. The bookmakers agree. Hat now looks as though he's going to win this one. Round eight. Penny for the thoughts of Craig Watson, of David Kirk, of David Keir, Alan Bosworth, all men who beaten Matthew Hatton. And when they did so, I'm sure they wouldn't have believed that this fella could have wound up being a European champion and performing with the distinction that he's showing here against a really good fighter in Yuri Nuznenko. Jim's got it level there on his card, but you sense that the tide has maybe now turned in Hatton's direction. Another good right hand catching Nuznenko as he came in.
Yeah, I feel that maybe we've seen now what Nuznenko has. And uh, there's nothing new he's going to produce. And Hattons has learned to cope with what he has, get his punches off quickly, initiating attacks a bit more often. Be interesting to know how the judges are scoring this one. The Ukrainian corner. Uh, the Ukrainian corner all looking poker faced and a little bit a uh, little bit worried. Certainly the Hatton corner looking the more confident. Well that was Hatton again been pulled up for punching behind the head. But he's the one landing the quality shots. These really are impressive bursts of punches from Hatton. Yuznenko just looking a little bit one-dimensional now, still trying to exert pressure, but not really doing anything effective when he gets close. Lovely stuff from Hatton. Big Brother was always want to say, wasn't he, that it's not a tickling contest in there, and Matthew Hatton is prepared to rough it up with Nuznenko, and he's come right back into this one after that awful start, and he's now there right in the face of Nuznenko, showing that he can brawl as well as box, and the referee wanting to have a word with the two men, and the, uh, the trouble with the loose. left glove. The bindings come loose. Where would your money be now, Jim? You think that Hatton has uh, moved into the ascendance? I think this is the important stage in the fight here. This is the fight to the stage where maybe Nuznenko, we would think his pressure would take its toll and uh, Hatton's legs would begin to wilt. It's not the case. He's producing tr tremendous boxing at the moment. He's looking in the man at the moment. The odds have switched in his favour. And I think that's fair comment. Nuznenko, highly ranked, former WBA champion, came here determined that he could be the better boxer and that he could outclass Matthew Hatton. It's not turned out to be. There's the right hand. Hatton partially blocked it. Well, Nuznenko is looking as though he can produce, but he's not producing. He's just doing exactly the same things, nothing new. And it stopped working. A beautiful right hand again. Working a treat for Hatton. One, two. No knockdown. No knockdown given. That's a slit. A yeah, little bit of bad temper showing in Nuznenko now. He's frustrated. He knows things have turned against him. He's raising the pace, but not raising the quality. He's trying to bully Hatton, but Hatton will not be bullied. And leading off beautifully with that left hand, turning the punch. And then another ticking off for the punch around the back of the head. It's the one thing he has to be careful of. It's that kind of fight, they're up close a lot. Sometimes he'd be better just not punching to the head up close because he's going to have a points deduction and that would be a disaster. That is the last thing that Matthew Hatton needs. Another good little flurry of punches, ending with a solid right hand. Rusnenko has been open to that right the way through the contest. And Hatton just looking the busier. Some of the holders of this title over the years, and there have been some great Easy names who have been European champions. Georges Carpentier, the Orchid Man, fought all the way up to heavyweight. Fought Jack Dempsey. Ted Kid Lewis, one of the great boxers to have come out of the East End of London. Julio Loy, charismatic Italian, never lost this belt in the ring. And then who could forget John H. Stracy went on from being European champion to become a world champion at this weight. And Dave Boy Green, charismatic as well, went on to twice challenge for the world crown, lost to Sugar Ray Leonard. Lloyd Hunnigan, well, when he won the European title, beat Gianfranco Rossi and then beat Don Curry for the world crown. And Gary Jacobs, good fighter as well, won away in France against Ludovic Proto. And now Matthew Hatton, European champion, following in their footsteps as we go into the ninth round. Well, I think Hatton's movement has caused all sorts of problems on his name. He can't pin him down. He's marching forward, but when he gets up close, not being allowed to be effective, Hatton getting his punches off a little bit quicker. He's guilty of holding a little bit up close and guilty of the punches behind the head, which he has to be careful of. And now problems with the right glove binding for Matthew Hatton. Gives him a little bit of a breather. He looks fresh though still, Jim. Yeah, well, there's a huge drive for the first 20 seconds or so in every round from Nuznenko. 
So Hatton just has to let that subside a little bit, then get his boxing back together. Start doing that now. There's the right hand. Oh, no, that's better from Nuznenko. You sense that he believes that he's the stronger guy and the complaint from Hatton that Nuznenko went in with the head. Yeah, he was rubbing the head and it wasn't a clash. He actually rubbed the head in there, so obviously wants to bully Hatton. Take the smoothness out of his boxing. Still trying to intimidate him, isn't he? He's trying to get in there and get a close quarters and throw him around. Hatton having none of it, and there's that dangerous right hand again over the top. He's just having to show a little bit of grit at the moment, Hatton. Much more effective when he steps forward to meet Nuznenko. Difficult to counter when he's pushed back. So at least to get his punches off a little bit quicker than way he was doing in the last couple of rounds. That's better. Bob Shannon, Hatton's trainer, always talks of the necessity to have terrific stamina, and he's a hard, stern taskmaster. He's really put Hatton through it, and now as we reach this stage of the fight, that's when it can count. He's got to stay all the way to the line. Oh, great shot, good right hand. I think that's damaged then, uh, Nuznenko's left eye. I see a little bit of blood just on the eyebrow as that punch landed. So that right hand has worked a treat, and that's what happens when he steps forward with the punch. He can't get any punches or leverage into the shots when he's bullied back to the ropes, get the punches off a little bit quicker. Exactly like that. It's been Hatton's key shot, the key tool in his armory, the right hand. And it was an absolute peach of a punch that he caught Nuznenko in with, but now Nuznenko getting right into Hatton's face again. But he's not doing an awful lot when he gets in close. There's not enough clean work coming from Nuznenko. The clean work we're seeing is coming from Hatton. This is a close round, a little bit scrappy. But the clean shots, again, have come from Matthew Hatton. And it's the scoring of this sort of round which determines the course of the fight, assuming it goes the distance with the judges. Beautiful right hand again. This neck will come back with a couple of left hooks of his own. Interesting round, close round. Nuznenko landed some decent shots. I'm sure as he sits down, that corner, and the trainer, Alexander Polischuk, they'll believe that they've taken that last round. But did they do enough? How will the judges see it? Working away on that damaged right eye, Jim. Yeah, well, Nuznenko charging forward, but you can see not the accuracy. Good movement, that's where he rubbed the head in. He's been warning about that, but That's walking punch. on to punches, some lovely punching from Hatton. The timing with the right hand has been beautiful all the way through this. He wants to make better use of it, and if he would just move forward, take the initiative a little bit more often. There's the punch total, not a lot in it. Hatton maybe with the slight advantage, which is a good spot with that left eye. They've just had to work, and right hand did just open a little nick around the left eyebrow of Nuzdenko. Move now into the 10th, three rounds left. Is Hatton going to be able to hold on to his title? He'll believe that he's ahead in this fight. For his part, Nuznenko, he will certainly think that he can have the power to make Hatton give ground and to claim the closing stage of this fight and maybe to edge it on foreign territory, where he's used to winning. Well, Nuznenko has been the aggressor all the way through, but there have been several rounds but he hasn't really produced any really effective work so again he's doing pretty much the same things if nothing else in his locker no surprises coming but he's still looking strong and purposeful crowd trying to raise matthew hatton as he picks Nuznenko off with yet another right hand as Nuznenko tries to get in close to land those concussive left hooks there were shades of Ricky Hatton, the way he stepped slightly to the right and delivered that left hook to the body. Yeah, well, he's obviously picked up something, is that right hand again, a glancing blow this time. Not an awful lot of method in what Nuznenko's doing, it's just kind of brute force. So Hatton needs to find a little bit of space to get his punches off. Family Hatton on the far side, extremely animated. Now, what 
once again the binding works loose on the right glove this time for Nuznenko. A few precious seconds, come on, shouts Ricky. Lady with the blonde hair at ringside there is Matthew's partner, Jenna. Also giving Matthew the benefit of plenty of support. You would have thought the corner would have worked a little bit quicker to get Nuznenko back into action there. They took a, an awful long time to get that repaired, the glove. Maybe suggest that he's feeling the pace. Under. It's a left hand from Nuznenko. Hatton can't afford to get careless. Fitness and conditioning from Matthew Hatton is keeping him right in there at this stage of the fight. Yeah, and the little bus up close. This really is a really tough round to score. Not an awful lot of clean work. Is Nenka doing the pressing? Both of them landing with headshots. And Nenko for the most part is on the front foot. That's good though from Hatton. Now closing stage of this tenth. Flurries of blows here might be enough to catch the judges' eyes and to prove the determining factor in this round. Well, he's finished the stronger in several of the rounds. He just wants to put the pedal down now, maybe just a little bit late. A beautiful shot, punching there from Hatton. Impressive hand speed as well from Hatton. Scoring blows, and he got the flurry in those last few seconds. And I just wonder if that might have been enough. Difficult to split them. It was a really close round, that one. And it's rounds like that which can be so vital in the scoring. Yeah, you just wonder, will they be impressed by the aggression of Nuznenko? But I thought his work was scrappy. The clean punching came from Hatton. <laughs> Still to come after this, another title fight. Martin Murray against Peter Mitrevsky for the vacant wow. Commonwealth middleweight title. Be sure to stay with us for that. Does Zuznenko have the look of a man who's about to take this title? As the punch has landed and has with an advantage, but not by an awful lot. And you can see Nushnenko, principally the left hook, big advantage with the body shots, head shots for Hatton, right hand principally, he's had the advantage there. I just wonder, will Hatton have the strength to come forward for the last couple of rounds? Just step in with the punches, take some of the momentum. You know, out of Nuznenko's work, and in the close rounds, sometimes the, the aggressor is favoured. So just step in with the shots. Well, there's a little bit of signs of frustration from Hatton there. Needs to stay focused right down to the final line here. Love the tape coming loose again. Seen a drive from Nuznenko at the moment. Nuznenko. Binding round that left glove is working loose again, and protests from Nuznenko about Hatton dragging him on round the back of the head, which Hatton does again. And the referee just has to keep a grip of this. Nuznenko's corner being told to shut up, and also now to get the binding right on that left glove, and a few jeers and cat calls from the audience. I mean, they should be checking the, the, the gloves in between rounds because he actually came out and it was loose straight away. The corner, I know it's, it's a big job they have in their hands, but you have to pay attention to that. And Yuznenko is getting a little bit of momentum in his work there. So Hatton will be pleased for the little break. Good left hook from Yuznenko, Hatton holding on. From Hatton's point of view, certainly that break came at a pretty good time. In the penultimate round in the Bolton Arena, European welterweight title. Matthew Hatton's European welterweight title. Is the bauble, the belt which is up for grabs here. Yuri Nuznenko, the former WBA world champion. I'm just going to sleep a little bit here, just dropped off the pace. And I don't think he can afford to do that. Well, our, by our reckoning, Hatton has the advantage, but he was down in that opening round, and he can't afford to let Nuznenko come on strong in these last two rounds. Well, he just wants to grit his teeth and start firing some punches here. He's been a little bit negative. 
the first couple of minutes, Yuzhenko digging in some shot, chopping hooks there. Here's another one. Yuzhenko's really digging in here and planting his feet, trying to throw these shots with some considerable intent, trying to shift Hatton even at this stage of the contest. And he's trying to bully Hatton around inside. Yep, he's lost his way a little bit. He's not timing the punches in this round, missing again, walking on to shots. Not a good round for Hatton. Not finishing stronger in this one. Well, this has been a good round for Nuzhnenko. <laughs> Matthew Hatton, if he were to win this, would move into the WBA top ten. That's the sort of thing which is at stake, and with that top ten ranking, improbable as it may have seemed at one stage in his career, he'd have the chance of going for a world title. Three minutes away, three minutes will decide it. That 11th round on my card anyway, Jim, that's got to go yeah, to... Yeah, got to yeah. go to... Yeah, last show. round, Matt. Come yeah. on. Last round, Matt. This is all or nothing, innit? Yep. You're listening. You've got to be busy. You listen. Come on, come on. Down the middle, as he's saying to you, distance. You're getting too close to him. That's your fight and his fight. Fight our fight. Yeah. Box. Are you listening? This is the last three minutes. Keep your cycle, isn't it? Yeah. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Box clear. It's all about this. Bang, 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 and moving. None of this. I've done it now. I've done it. Done it. Done it. Make sure he does these as well. Right. Listen, come on. Yeah. Don't need to be on the head again. Yeah. Listen. You're listening. Yeah. It's all the jab. Bang, bang. Two hands. This is the last round. You've got to win this. Come on, you It's all about his jab. Yeah. Don't mix it with him. Worthy this is it. Honour. Title. Family. Listen, let's go. Go on, listen. There's the belt that's at stake, the European welterweight title. Three minutes now, and you heard what the corner made. They reckon, Bob Shannon reckons, this three minutes, absolutely crucial, and Jim concurs. Yeah, but I have a one point in Hatton's favour. I've been more impressed with the clean punching at long range when, he, when, he, when the timing was right, but he was marched down in the 11th round. So really, every ounce of energy he can summon he wants to pull it out in this round. Maybe Nuznenko's can't, can't know he needs a big finish, boxing away from home as well. But this is the kind of fight, really, whichever way the judges see it, it's difficult to argue with because so many close rounds and a big drive again from Nuznenko. Some, some fights you can say with certainty, Jim, this is most definitely not one of them. The corner, the Hatton corner, was saying you've been dragged into Nuznenko's fights, that it's been come a brawl and that it's become a test of strength. They wanted him to throw flurries and bunches of punches in these last three minutes. Easier said than done when Nuznenko is right in Hatton's face like this. Yeah, nice little feint there from Nuznenko before he threw the punch. I think he feels now he's much stronger than Hatton. I think Hatton is struggling with the pace now. Oh, good work from Hatton, though, came out of the clinch and threw the good right hand. Down to the last 90 seconds, second half of the 12th round. Who knows, it might still be right on the line. Nuznenko's looking for a knockout punch. Yeah, both very tired, but Nuznenko's the one who's driving himself forward. Is that... Because he's the stronger or because he really feels he needs a big finish to get his hands on this title. One minute now and counting. Matthew Hatton in the first defence of his European title. The crowd trying to pull him to even greater exertions. And look at this, sheer aggression and bravery from both men. Nuznenko came here believing that he had the skills, the experience to take it. Hatton, proud, determined, fit and fresh. He was not going to be denied. And now it is into the last 30 seconds and Hatton suddenly looks the stronger. Nuznenko still the one coming forward. A little bit scrappy now, they're both desperately tired. Scrappy, brawling stuff, use of the shoulder from both men, good work, good flurry of punches from Matthew Hatton, up on his toes in the last few seconds of a stirring last round. Has Hatton done enough? In just a moment or two, the judges will be left to determine it. 
The final bell sounds, Hatton celebrates, and he walks a little bit disconsolately back to his corner, Yuri Nuznenko, and Matthew Hatton believes that he is still the champion of Europe. Yeah, well, I don't think Nuznenko has done enough to take Matthew Hatton's title. I think he's clean of punching all the way through. Well, according to the, it, eh? the fight starts with one punch in it. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a draw here. A split decision, maybe. Well, the knockdown in the opening round be decisive that one single point because there were so many close, tight, scrappy rounds. You see it whichever way you like. Some of those rounds I saw for Hatton because his work was a little bit cleaner. But this is one of those fights you cannot argue whichever way the judges want to see this. So it close. It was a tough, tough fight. And right the way through, Jim. Yeah, well, round one, uh, Nuznenko came out, surprised everyone with the pace he set. Hatton by the third round started to get his wits about him, but uh, still taking big punches from Nuznenko. Then suddenly he found the room and the movement and started really boxing well, coming into his own towards the middle of the fight. And this is where I thought the clean punching from Hatton it was cancelling out the aggression and, and the work rate of Nuznenko. But uh, Nuznenko, as though he felt he needed a big drive in the later stages, started marching forward. But how many times did we see him walking straight on to that right hand? Surprised that Hatton didn't make use of that right hand in the last couple of rounds, because that was the punch that Nuznenko couldn't cope with. But big finish from Nuznenko. But again, Hatton, just when he had to in the last round, dug in and again, maybe just produced the more quality punching. I certainly don't think that the Ukrainian corner think that they've won this one, but now we can find out. Here's Michael Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here are the judges' score totals. Judge Franco Chuminali sees the contest 117 to 110. Judges Venceslav Nikolov and William Verweis both see the contest 116 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision and still the welterweight champion of Europe from Manchester, Magic Matthew Hatton. So by margins of seven rounds on one of the judges' cards, wide that one, and by five rounds on the other two judges' cards, Matthew Hatton has done himself proud here in Bolton, and he is still European champion, and with that win, he's in a position that he could now go for a world crown. Absolutely wide and unanimous for Matthew Hatton. We'll be talking to the delighted champion next, getting Johnny's verdict on that display, and it's our second title fight of the night. One of Britain's most exciting prospects attempting to break through, Martin Murray targeting the Commonwealth middleweight crown. That's coming up. <laughs>